Ah, oh, you find me in my favourite chairs. Why is it my favourite chair? Well, if I press a button here, you see, the whole thing goes like this. So, why am I relaxing? Well, tomorrow I'm going up to Nottinghamshire to see my very good friend Malcolm Sales in order to do my next OM5 experience, which is photographing inside churches. So we're going to Southall Minster. So I'm looking forward very much to the trip, taking of course the OM5 with the 12 to 45 Pro lens. And oh, by the way, got the Ordnance Survey map. This particular edition has one of my pictures on the front cover. So as you can see, I'm fully prepared. Right, if you excuse me now, I will carry on relaxing. See you later. There are photographic subjects that not only require good photographic technique, but also a knowledge of the subject. Church interiors are an example, but they still offer many technical challenges. But first, a bit of history. I have visited Southall several times, and I featured the town in my book about Nottinghamshire. Now these photographs were taken, what, 20 years ago, with some of the first Olympus digital cameras. Southall Minster is the Cinderella of the Cathedral Canon, possibly the least known, and it is the smallest town in England with a cathedral. It was not until 1884 that it was raised to cathedral status. However, its magnificent west front, except the perpendicular window, is pure Norman, and the chapter house is one of the finest and most beautiful in the country. Immediately striking are the towers, two retaining their spires, which were replaced in the 19th century. They were once a common feature to Norman churches. Now the nave and transepts are also Norman, but the East End and Chapter House are 13th century. Well, I'm at uh, Southall in Nottinghamshire. I've made it. And Malcolm over there is looking on at what I am doing. We've had a look at the Minster. Now the weather has been perfect for that. It is cloudy. Not so good for the big view up on the hill. There's a lovely view up there. I'm going to show it to you, but it's a cloudy day. Now, about 20 years ago, I took some lovely pictures in the sun. And fortunately, the view hasn't changed all that much. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to compare not only the difference in what 20 years might make to a photograph, but the difference between a picture, a landscape picture, taken on a dull day and one taken on a sunny day. Anyway, as I said, I've been inside the Minster, so it's time for us to go back and have another look and I'll show you the pictures. For my latest shoot, I am switching over to the OM system, OM5 camera and 12-45 Pro lens as supplied out of box. I was tempted to use different lenses, but felt it more meaningful to use the basic camera kit. Neither am I using any accessories, but as I'm saving to RAW, post-production is in Adobe Lightroom. For views inside a church that capture detail, a cloudy, even dull day is best, as it reduces contrast to a manageable level. But this will decrease the level of light, forcing the photographer to use a long shutter speed, even at full aperture, which for the 12 to 45 is f4 constant. However, for hand holding, the OM5 has excellent camera stabilization, allowing me to keep the ISO at 200 for optimum quality. I will show the camera details, and some of the shutter speeds might surprise you. Record shots of stained glass windows also photograph best on a cloudy day. 
I still spot meter a highlight and correct in Lightroom so that fine detail is not burnt away. Except in June and July, windows facing north are unlikely to receive direct sunlight in the UK. I am aware of HDR, but for more control, I prefer to spot meter a highlight, save to RAW, and then correct in Lightroom. With latest sensors and software, there is no excuse for shots down the nave having a burnt-out window at the other end. This can be avoided by spot metering near but not on the window, followed by correcting the underexposed nave in Lightroom. It doesn't work the other way, that is, exposing for the interior and then correcting an overexposed window in post-production. Burnt out areas are difficult to recover, and when faced with an Possible choice, I prefer a bit of noise than a burnt out window. Depth of field can be an unforeseen problem, and to resolve this issue, a traditional understanding of photography is important. Because they use shorter focal length lenses, Micro Four Thirds has an unexpected advantage. Depth of field is increased by using a small aperture or a lens having a short focal length, such as wide angle. The former is achieved by lengthening the shutter speed, difficult if a tripod cannot be used, otherwise by increasing the ISO. Because Micro Four Thirds uses lenses with shorter focal lengths, extended depth of field from front to back is a luxury even at f4. I mentioned the 13th century chapter house. Don't miss it. Here nature runs riot. Riches at its entrance with a spectacular display of carved leaves, but the sculptors are unknown. Their accuracy and attention to detail is miraculous. Twelve species of leaves have been identified, including maple, oak, and hawthorn. There are even faces and animals. Inside the chapter house, the vault soars without a central support, and the windows have fragments of earlier glass from around 1300. Otherwise, they are clear. Next door is the Archbishop's Palace, partly in ruin, and by walking along Robin Hood Way up Park Hill is a breathtaking view back to the town that places the whole scene in context. Whilst a cloudy day is perfect for church interiors, it is not so helpful for wide-ranging views. Here is an image taken many years ago when the lighting was better for landscapes. I find the OM5 extremely versatile for travel photography, particularly walking. Regulars to my channel will know that I do not lug around a load of gear in a designer camera bag that I will probably not use. Furthermore, when offering an assessment about a camera, surely it is more meaningful if you can demonstrate its capabilities 
out of the box. Therefore, I have kept to the 12 to 45 Pro lens, which does not have an image stabilizer, but the camera does, and it certainly focuses the mind when hand-holding. But I think that I've got away with it.